just a few minutes late here. Uh, we did have a few uh, technical things that we were working through, but thank you guys so much uh, for joining us on today. Um, I want to start off by saying that I'm really excited to be back uh, in front of you guys. As we, we all know, we're aware we've been hearing about it since March. We're in the midst of a pandemic, and I really miss seeing you guys face to face and um, spending time with you all as a community. So I'm excited to get in front of you all today. We do have a very packed agenda, so I have a few things that I'm going to uh, go over with you. Uh, let me go ahead and start sharing uh, my screen here. So we do have, again, we have a, a packed agenda here that we're going to go through. Um, we do have our mayor that will be joining us for a period of time today. Uh, everyone is going to be on mute. Uh, the beginning of the meeting is just information. So uh, at the very beginning, we're not doing any questions because it's just a presentation of information. We will give you the opportunity to speak once the mayor gets on because I want him to have the opportunity to hear directly from our District 29 residents so that uh, he can hear, you know, he hears it from me um, and I'm sure he hears it from you guys when you send emails, but I think it's really powerful uh, for him to hear directly about what you're seeing in your community. Um, so when we do go, go to that portion of the meeting, I'll ask that you are um, brief and concise with your comments so that we can hear from as many people as possible. Uh, in today's meeting, we are going to cover uh, some community updates as well as beautification updates. We have two updates from planning with uh, one is a proposal for a redevelopment and one um, is a proposal for a subdivision, uh, not, not a subdivision as in a, a large group of houses, um, as in subdividing a parcel of land. And then we're going to have some updates from our traffic common department as well as MMPD. Uh, a big issue that we've been hearing a lot about from the community uh, has been uh, with regards to traffic calming, um, speeding, going through residential areas. We're having a lot of issues with aggressive driving and drag racing. So we do have an individual from MMPD that will be joining the call to address that as well. Uh, and you will have the opportunity to speak when we go through the traffic calming and uh, MMPD as well as when we are uh, doing the planning updates. So as we get through the first few slides here, uh, one thing that I wanted to share is that Public Works um, is now changing their, uh, their trash pickup and recycling route in order to be more effective. Um, of, as we know, the city is growing and there was an issue. Uh, we have been having an issue with trash pickup. We had a, a community meeting to address that already, um, but in the event that you were not able to, to attend that meeting, uh, just as a recap, uh, we have been noticing uh, since I've been elected for about a year and a half now, um, from the very beginning, we were noticing issues where the trash was not being picked up um, consistently on Fridays. So we had a lot of people putting in hub requests and talking through um, what the problems were, why we were having problems with pickup on Fridays. Um, the, a lot of council members worked together. We worked very closely with our public works department and they worked with our uh, waste management, the company that was providing the services um, and what uh, they they were thankfully able to improve the service. Our public works department did take over some of those routes. And now um, as a next step to continue to improve that service, they're changing the trash pickup from four days a week to five days a week. And that will start on Monday, November the 2nd. Uh, from what I've seen, it does appear that District 29 will still be picked up on Friday. Uh, what you may see is uh, a change in your recycling day. Um, you may see a different Friday pickup. So for me, my day changed from, I think, the fourth Friday to the third Friday. Uh, but Public Works does have a, a few websites that you can go to. Um, if you go to collectionday.nashville.gov, you can sign up for uh, an email reminder, and you will also be able to see uh, what your collection day is. And that will provide you with your trash pickup day as well as your recycling day. And you can also uh, download a calendar from routechanges.nashville.gov. Uh, if you have questions about it, you can contact, um, or if there are any issues that persist, you could definitely contact Hub Nashville by dialing 311. 
And uh, lastly, there are means notifications that we have through the city. They're very convenient. You can get a text message or email reminder um, to remind you of your trash pickup days as well as your recycling days. Since trash is every week, I, I always remember that, but I always forget about my recycling. So it's very helpful to get a reminder um, about that service uh, so that I could be prepared. Uh, we do have uh, John Honeysucker here, um, who's been working as a liaison with both Metro Water and Public Works. Uh, Mr. Honeysucker, do you have anything that you want to add to this um, to this information before we go on to the next slide? Okay, he gave me a thumbs up. He's good to go. So we'll go uh, to to our next slide here. Um, if you are an MNPS parent, as we know, our students, uh, some of our kids have returned back to school after fall break. If you're not aware, if you go to MNPS.org, there are resources to help support you and your family. Um, this is just a snapshot of the virtual playbook that they have uh, online. I found this really helpful. I've shared it with a lot of families. I think some of the biggest things that we're seeing um, for people that are having issues with tech support, they do have tech centers where you can go to one of the schools and help get tech support uh, for your family and for your students, as well as the meal distribution. So that's really huge. Um, what we're seeing is you can go and pick up, you can go to the bus route or you can go to uh, your local school and pick up uh, both breakfast and lunch for your students if your students are still home, if they're participating in virtual learning. And they've also uh, customized it so you don't have to come every day. You can pick up on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays um, and it will allow you to pick up enough food for the interim and this is available for any student free of charge any student that's 18 years or uh, 18 years old or younger so that has been a good resource um, another thing that they have on the MNPS page is the number of COVID cases. So I know there have been uh, there are lots of concerns about what that's going to look like with our students teachers and families. Um, returning back to school and how uh, COVID will have an impact on that. Uh, but if you go to the MNPS.org website, they do have a link that will show you the for each week. They update it weekly and it shows you the total number of COVID cases per school. And it will also let you know about any quarantining that's happening at the school. Um, I have asked MNPS to share this explicitly with families. Um, so I'll, I'll say it to you all directly. If you are making the decision to send your child back to school in person, which we know that's a personal decision for every family and every family is different. But if you are making that decision, uh, please know that there at any point in time, you know, there may be a call that um, that someone ha has COVID and that you now have to quarantine your child for, you know, 14 days or however long the school is saying. So, you know, that can be very difficult um, and, and short notice if you get a call today that says that you can't send your child to school tomorrow. So. You know, sometimes people don't necessarily think through what that may look like in the future. So you may want to prepare if you get that type of phone call, uh, what uh, you'll be able to do with your child, as I know many um, adults are working. Um, we now have a beautification update. Uh, we do have a new beautification commissioner who's on the call with us and he'll be presenting for a moment next. His name is Greg Dun uh, Dunnigan. He's down in the bottom, giving us a nice thumbs up here. And um, uh, our current, uh, our beautification commissioner uh, did have a family emergency that caused her to have to move away. So Greg is taking over for us and uh, I've worked very closely with him uh, since uh, before I was elected, uh, talking about a lot of sustainability issues as well as recycling, trash pickup and litter. So Greg will be able to talk about some of the efforts that uh, that we've been working on together and some of the ideas that he has. Um, but I did want to highlight one project that we did just a few weeks ago. Um, the men of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity reached out to me and they wanted to do a beautification effort in our community. And anytime someone reaches out and they say that they want to, to do something for us, I absolutely want to take advantage of that. So I reached out to our local schools and Una Elementary School did have a project that they needed. Um, um, their uh, basketball goals needed uh, replacing, and there was some beautification needs that were on the grounds. So uh, with the gentlemen in the picture of the top far left, what they were able to do, uh, they came out uh, with some uh, weed eaters and uh, the blowers, and they were able to do uh, some beautification on the front of the school. But then on the back of the school, they uh, purchased 
and replaced all of the basketball nets for their uh, basketball goals on the back. And uh, they did some painting of those poles. And Greg also came in and did some painting. And uh, my daughter, Janiyah, and I, we helped. Uh, we were more so in a supervisory role because we didn't want to mess up that painting. But we painted just a little bit. But we left that, that uh, heavy lifting to uh, Greg <laughs> to make sure that that didn't get messed up. And uh, he also was able to touch up some of the playground equipment. So I'm going to turn it over to him so that uh, he can, um, I, I, well, I'll unmute so that he can talk a little bit more about uh, some of the work that we've been doing together around property violations and uh, littering in our district. Cool, hi everybody. Uh, as Delicia said, I'm Greg Dunnigan and I was recently appointed to the Beautification and Environment uh, Commission representing our district 29. Uh, I love our corner of the city and I'm honored to serve it. Uh, the Beautification Commission is what it sounds like. It's a group of people who uh, want to live in a beautiful neighborhood. We beautify uh, by combating litter, illegal dumping, and various property violations. Uh, for example, Delicia and I grabbed 44 illegal signs just in the past two months, and we filed 65 reports on hub.nashville.gov, uh, like cars parked in yard, roadside litter, illegal dumping, overgrown grass, uh, many more. So hub.nashville.gov, you can report things, it works. It's very easy. You can submit anonymously if you like, but if you give at least an email, you'll be emailed updates on that report. Use an email that doesn't have your name in it if you're worried about it. Uh, if you don't have access to the internet, you can call 311, same services. So not everybody has time to go sign hunting. Um, so we're just asking uh, you to do what you can, if you can. Uh, for those of us who are able to go out sign hunting and looking for and reporting violations, it's it's not it's not only legal for residents to remove illegal signs, it's encouraged by the city. You can remove any sign that is on the grassy strip between the sidewalk and the street, like the cars for junk, uh, cash for junk cars, we buy homes, signs offering services. Uh, we cannot remove election signs or city notices and never a sign that's on private property. Um, for more information and more specifics on this or other programs, you can uh, email us at uh, beautifieddistrict29 at gmail.com. And finally, some of the beautification efforts that we're working on that uh, will be coming up are uh, adding daffodils and other wild flowers to public and high visibility areas around our district. We're going to take advantage of the county and state tree programs to get more trees in our district. As, as you know, increasing our tree canopy has many benefits. And we'll be organizing litter walks and other events. So again, if you want to join our mailing list and, and keep up to date, beautifiedistrict29 at gmail.com. Thank you, Delicia. Thank you, neighbors. Um, thank you, Greg. One thing that I'll add really quickly, thank you for sharing that about the uh, political signs. Um, prior to COVID, if I saw someone with a, a property violation or if a neighbor reported it to me, I would try to go and knock on the door and, t and tell them because sometimes, I don't ever tell them who reported it, but I will let them know like, hey, you can't have a mattress in your front yard or, um, you know, you can't sit this couch here on the side of the on the side of your yard. Um, so I would try to talk to our neighbors to let them know to make sure that there was some uh, education piece there. Um, but with COVID, of course, that's a, a concern. So I'm not able to do that face to face anymore. Um, so I, I do encourage people to try to be a good neighbor as much as possible. If you notice something and you have a relationship with your neighbor, feel free to call or text them and just, you know, let them know about the resources. We do have a bulk pickup. You can go to the sheriff's uh, department, the sheriff's department, they do free bulk pickup. So if you have a couch that you're getting rid of because you're moving, you can call them and schedule a day and put the couch on the curb and they will come and pick that up for free. So we don't have to actually dump in our neighborhoods that we see. Uh, we just need to make sure that people know about those services. And again, anything that you see, whether it's a pothole in the middle of the street, um, dial 311 or use at hub.nashville to get it reported. The turnaround time is really quickly. Um, they, they fix these things uh, really quickly. And um, we just want to make sure that we're all being good stewards and taking care of our communities. Uh, Greg and I both do drives throughout the district every week looking for uh, different violations so that we can try to keep our community clean. But it definitely takes more than the two of us. So we need everyone. Um, lastly, I want to say people have been asking about the community cleanups. 
those are currently on hold right now uh, due to COVID concerns. So, uh, you know, every year we have those uh, two big cleanups, uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, typically that is scheduled for October, but um, we're not having them right now. What we can do are those small litter walks. And what you can do individually is, you know, if you see trash in your neighborhood on your street, you can pick that up individually and we encourage people to do that and we'll be doing that uh, as a community, but we can't do those big, uh, the big dumpings that we normally do up at Compton's, but as soon as we're able to host those again, we will definitely do that. Uh, Matthew, I can't see the list with my uh, with the PowerPoint up. So when the mayor gets on, will you just uh, unmute and let me know so that I can uh, switch over to him? I will. I have not seen him join yet unless he's a call in user. And if he's a call in user, then I wouldn't be able to see his name. Okay, perfect. And I see uh, Kathy from the mayor's office and I see Brandon Marshall. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, so that the invitation stands, if you see, um, if you see that Mayor Cooper has uh, jumped on, if you can just unmute and let me know um, or send me a text message, probably unmute. I may not see the message while we're, while we're doing the meeting, um, but just let me know and we'll uh, pause to acknowledge him to give him the opportunity to hear from some of our residents. The next thing that I wanted to share with you guys, and can you all see the PowerPoint okay? Kathy, I can see you. Give me a thumbs up if you can see the PowerPoint okay. Okay, thank you. Um, the next thing I wanted to share, uh, we know that this has been a hard time financially for everyone across the country. Um, we did get COVID relief funds uh, from our federal government that uh, our Metro City Council has been uh, voting on relief efforts. We actually have a CARES Act committee uh, that is comprised of various individuals, but three of our council members serve on that committee and they help allocate funds to make sure that uh, everyone gets their fair share of the relief assistance and to make sure that we have this provided for anyone who needs it. So I, I, I'm including this graphic here, but you can go to a safenashville.org um, or you can just go to, to Nashville.gov. It's right on the front page. At the very top, you'll see a banner and it has a COVID-19 link, link to it. Um, you can go to it directly by uh, typing in COVID19.Nashville.gov. And again, this uh, recording will be shared out. So if you mm. don't get uh, some of the information today, if you don't get it while we're talking, it's okay because it will be posted online and you'll be able to go back and watch it. And the information is always sent out in the newsletter as well. But um, the, we do have these relief efforts. Um, okay, the mayor just texted in and said that he's listening in by audio. So thank you so much, Mayor. After I share this information, we're going to uh, allow some of our residents to kind of talk through some of the things that they're seeing um, so that the mayor can hear from them. Um, but again, if you are experiencing uh, any type of loss during this time, if you need food assistance, rent or utility assistance, um, if you are a small business or if you know small business owners, um, if you are a musician, we want to make sure that uh, we're all doing our part to share this information and to make sure that people know that, you know, there is a helping hand that's available. Um, the, if you go to the, the website that I listed here, you can actually click on these links and it'll take you directly to the organizations that are dispersing this, uh, these forms. Uh, excuse me, these funds. So you can apply for funding through the United Way through Second Harvest. So again, please make sure that uh, you are taking advantage of that if um, if you uh, need to. And I'm going to pause here for a moment so that we can hear uh, from some of our constituents. Um, and Matthew, if you can help me out here, if you are, if you would like to share a concern that you want uh, Mayor Cooper to hear about, if you could um, just raise your hand and Matthew, if you can start uh, just uh, unmuting people one by one. And again, uh, we do, uh, uh, we're so glad that the mayor could join us. He does have another obligation. So we want to make sure to be respectful of his time. So if you could keep your comments brief and concise, um, anything that uh, that we need to continue to cover uh, once he's off the call, we will make sure that you have an opportunity to do that as well. Great, and I'll just jump in. If you want to raise your hand um, and you're on the WebEx app, all you, you need to do is hover over your name and it should uh, there should be a little hand that you can click on. I think there's also um, a, a lower part of the corner as well. If you're a call-in user, you are an attendee and I will have to manually unmute. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll go through the, the people on the app first since 
they can raise their hand and then I'll have to go through each call in user and ask if they have a question. And additionally, if somebody from the mayor's office could email me, me the first um, uh, three digits of the mayor's number that he called in on so I can unmute him when the time comes because unfortunately I cannot see which one the mayor is to unmute. And I apologize for that. So the first person we have is Sarah uh, Warburton. So we're going to unmute you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Hi, um, I just wanted to, um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher and I wanted to just put out there a concern that I had um, with the school district's plan to have parents check temperature at home. That sounds like a great idea, but I'm in a school where many of our students, most of them are underprivileged. Many of them don't have thermometers. Some of them have been expressing they don't know how they're going to be able to get a thermometer because they're barely making ends meet. So I just wanted to put that out there that maybe if this is the plan, which it is, that maybe somehow some funds could be used to provide families with digital thermometers. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing that thought. I, I will add real quickly to um, another concern about that is uh, people sending their students in sick. We know uh, when I was a teacher, uh, parents sent their kids into school sick every day, many times because they don't have anyone to, you know, keep their child while they're at work. So that's definitely a concern with the uh, people, you know, unfortunately sending their children in sick. That's a great idea, um, Sarah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, do we have anyone else that would like to raise their hand to uh, speak? I'm scrolling through the list here. Do we have anyone else using the app? If not, we're going to start going to the phone numbers. Okay, Matthew, if you want to start going through the phone numbers, I'd appreciate it. We'll do. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna, the way that it appears is it's the first six digits of your phone number, area code in the first three of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off that and then I'm going to unmute you and you'll have an opportunity to ask a question. So the first number is. Sorry. The first number is 615-417-615-417. You're now unmuted. Okay, um, moving on. Matthew, I think we lost you. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Matthew, are you still with us? I am. Can you still hear me? Okay, we can hear you now. Yes. So the it, it looks like the first caller didn't have anything to say. Um, can you go on to the second caller? Yes. Uh, the second caller's number is six one five seven seven two. Okay, let's go on to the third one. Yep. And this is how it normally goes. A lot of people. Just want to listen in. Uh, the next one is 570-916. Okay. Okay, let's try the next one. 9. We didn't hear that, Matthew. You're breaking up. Okay, guys, can you can you all still hear me? Uh, Mr. Honeysucker, can you give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me? Okay, perfect. So what I'll do, guys, in the in the interest of time, since we're uh, it, it looks like we're having a few tech issues, and I don't, I want to make sure that we're cognizant of everyone's time. I'll just share out some of the concerns that uh, that I've been hearing a lot, uh, some which are some of the things that we're addressing on this call. We have a, a 
a very big need for traffic calming in our community. Uh, we're seeing a lot of speeders. We're seeing people cut through streets. Um, we're seeing a lot of aggressive driving. There's drag racing, ha dra drag racing happening every single day, uh, all times of night. Um, you know, we call MMPD, uh, our constituents call MMPD, and I've been in, in conversation with MMPD, and they're on the call, so they are going to um, address that towards the end of the meeting uh, when they have their period of time. But again, this is uh, more so so that uh, our mayor can kind of hear from the community uh, what we're seeing out here. Um, you know, we still have a lot of residents that are, are asking for funding for the police precinct, the, the ninth police precinct, which is supposed to be uh, located on Murfreesboro Road. So we're hoping that that's something that we can get uh, funded. Our community has welcomed uh, a police presence out here. And, and we know different communities have different experiences, uh, but this is a, a suburban community that is welcoming the police to come out uh, to the community. Um, we, we've had lots of calls. I mean, every day we're getting uh, similar calls about um, about these same issues, the the drag racing is happening, you know, all throughout the night, two, three, four, five in the morning. We're having people doing donuts that are in the middle of the street. Um, people using our residential streets as cut throughs. Um, so there have been concerns with the speed limit and reducing the speed limit in areas. Um, there have been lots of requests for sidewalks out here. Um, Nashboro Boulevard, we have a lot of people that uh, are walkers. There are, there's an apartment complex, several apartment complexes there, and we do have a lot of people that um, that do have to walk to the grocery store and have to walk to work and, and have to uh, walk to get food um, so, and to use the bus, the public transportation system. Uh, so we've definitely uh, been trying to advocate for, for uh, sidewalks. Um, widening um, Smith Springs Road has been a big one. Um, there's a, a really bad issue with Smith Springs Road. The, the road is very narrow. And unfortunately, um, uh, if there's a traffic accident, you're sitting 30 minutes, you can't get out of our community uh, when we see that that, that is happening. Um, so I think the, the speeding, the, the drag racing, um, the sidewalk, um, the need for more police or the request for more police presence in our community. I think those have been the big, the biggest ones. Um, and MMPD has been a great partner um, with me. I know our, our residents, um, I probably get a call or text or email every single day um, with people asking for more um, more presence from MMPD, but they've just been wonderful. Um, I speak with Commander uh, Preston Brandy more all the time and Sergeant White and Sergeant Fernandez, um, and Commander Stevens, they've been just wonderful to, and very helpful. Um, so we thank them for the work that they've been doing. Uh, does anyone else have anything that they want to add while we have the mayor on the line before he has to jump off? And I just wanna jump in real fast and the mayor should be able to speak if he would like to, to respond to questions or to respond to any comments or make any comments. Yes, Matthew, I oh. emailed you the first three number digits of his number if you wanna unmute him. He's unmuted. Okay, thank you. Okay, Matthew, can you all can you hear me? And Council Lady Porterfield, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, super. Sir. Well, I'm so grateful to listen in, and boy, I love the suggestion um, or the concern about thermometers for kids. And uh, as we work our way through the virus, I think it seems like a very appropriate use of CARES money. Uh, down at that granular level. Level. I mean, some families have thermometers, but for those that don't, we need to be prepared. And then, the, as the council lady knows, I'm I'm totally committed to having that precinct built while I am mayor. We need to get beyond this referendum, um, but we can do it, and the community deserves a precinct, and we need to bring our staffing levels up so that we can staff it fully also. And then traffic calming, ab absolutely. And the nice thing about traffic calming is it's not that expensive, but it's really important to building great neighborhoods. So um, I'm hearing that loud and clear, too, and on the precinct, it's a necessity, but we need to do a lot of other things too. And I hope on the other side of the referendum, we can do that. Um, we need a middle school um, out in 
the council ladies area and I know their plans for getting to work on that. And ultimately we're all about, I think need to be about education and infrastructure and public safety and serving the community that way. But it's a great honor to be part of this and thank you for having me. And again, I promise the next time you have this uh, to get better at the technology so I can join on the WebEx and not just on the audio. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you for joining. Thank you for uh, sharing those thoughts and for also acknowledging the need for schools out here um, in Southeast Nashville. Yeah. Most of our schools are, are at capacity or near capacity, so we definitely need more yeah. out here. And one last thing, because I know you have to hop off um, the library. I will be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to address the need for a library in our community. It is in our library's master plan. It is something that we're working on and even looking at uh, public private partnerships on uh, getting our, our uh, library in our district. So we'll definitely talk more about that mayor, okay. but I just wanted to make sure to, okay. to acknowledge. I appreciate you bringing that up and I look forward to working with you on that. All right, and thanks to all. Really grateful and have a great evening. Thank you, Mayor. So we'll jump uh, right back into uh, right back into our meeting. Uh, the next thing that we have. Um, okay. Sorry, guys, it looks like uh, I don't know what just happened with my PowerPoint there. Uh, give me one moment to, to reload them. My apologies. Okay, so the next thing that we have, um, we have two different presentations that we're going to go through. Uh, one of which, um, and I just want to kind of preference it so that you guys are aware of uh, what this could potentially mean and, and what we're looking at. Um, the first presenter um, is dealing with a rezoning request. Uh, this uh, individual, th this uh, entity, um, they they've built on Couchville Pike, and I'll let him speak to the project that they've built uh, currently. But if you drive down uh, Couchville Pike, uh, we have uh, what I like to call these airport parks, and they're big um, warehouse buildings. Um, they uh, we did a rezoning uh, uh, last year in 2019. Um, the community on Couchville Pike was very supportive uh, because they were they would like the area to be more of an industrial area um, due to the proximity of the airport. Um, it's, it's in the community's master plan for this to be a part of our uh, business district, um, which is uh, an entity that is uh, the employment district, which is an entity that brings jobs to the area. So we did have a developer who did a rezoning or requested a rezoning and they were able to build um, a warehouse, a, a few of those um, on Casual Pike. And they, he's coming in today to update us on that project, as well as to request an additional rezoning um, that is uh, the property is technically um, um, the address is technically on Ned Shelton. Uh, however, the property won't have any access to Ned Shelton, so they, they wouldn't be using Ned Shelton at all. They would actually be using Couchville Pike. So um, he's going to uh, give us an update um, on where they are with their project, as well as to um, you know, make their request to the community about the rezoning, and then we'll uh, have the opportunity for our community to to ask any questions about that. And then uh, the next uh, presenter after that is a gentleman who owns property uh, right next to Una Elementary School, and uh, that is a parcel of land that they are requesting be subdivided into four different parcels, um, and that is not something that goes before council approval. So this is something that will go before the planning commission. Um, however, I will have the opportunity to speak to the planning commission to let them know if the community is in support or not. Um, so I did want to give him the opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, both of these individuals have been trying to get uh, in front of us for a while, um, but with uh, everything with uh, coronavirus, our priorities, or at least my priorities, have been um, had not been around development. My priorities were um, making sure that our residents had the things that they need, passing passing out masks, making sure that individuals had food. Um, so now that we've kind of gotten into the swing of things, I did want to give them the opportunity uh, to go ahead and present. So our first presenter will be uh, Mr. John Ditto. And Matthew, if you can let me know how to make uh, Mr. Ditto a, the presenter so that he can share his screen. 
I, I can do it. I just need to find him on the scroll down. Oh, okay. I found it and I just switched it over to him. Oh, perfect. You can do it. Perfect. And Mr. Ditto, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, I think I, I have done that. Can you, can you hear me? Council yes, sir. Porterfield? Okay. Thank you so much. Well, um, it's good to see you e even over a, um, a computer screen. And um, I'm I'm John Ditto, and um, live here in um, in Nashville. Um, we we are glad to be a part of the um, of the community. Um, we as as Council Lady Porterfield said, we are currently um, uh, building um, a few uh, business distribution buildings on um, on Couchville, and um, you know once we uh, lease those, we um, you know hope to start. Uh, Kind of phase two, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about our, our company and won't um, spend too much time on that. But uh, we, we are um, a, a locally um, based family owned company. Uh, we've been investing in um, Nashville for, um, you know, for about 10 years and um, uh, everybody in our office uh, lives in Davidson County and sends our kids to school here. So we're glad to be a part of this, this community. Um, what I was going to do next, and I'm not nearly as technologically advanced is Council Lady Porterfield. So I'm just going to share my screen and open up some files if I can figure out how to do that. Um, let's see, I'm going to hit share. And then let's see. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, sir, we can. We can see. Yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, what I wanted to do is um, give you a little overview of um, kind of what we've done. Um, this is um, Hamilton Creek um, Commerce Park. It's our first building, and we named it after the, um, the local creek there. Um, as you can see, this is not a traditional warehouse building. In fact, um, uh, most of our customers, um, they may have some distribution component, but they also have um, an office component. So th these are not um, buildings that are, are are purely for you know warehousing. They um, um, or they serve a broader a broader purpose. And I, I'll tell you a little bit about um, you know some of the customers that uh, uh, that we we cater to, but. Um, that's just one picture of, um, of Hamilton Creek, which again is on um, Couchville Pike. There's there's another from a um, uh, from a drone. Um, so we're almost uh, almost finished with those buildings. Um, let's see. Um, this image just kind of shows you a little bit about the um, the, the type customer that we um, uh, that we provide for. So. Uh, some of our current um, tenants are um, our Gibson Guitar. Um, I'm sure everybody in Nashville is familiar with Gibson. Um, they are a um, international company and um, proud to call Nashville home. So um, our um, uh, building over on Elm Hill Pike on the other side of the airport is their um, is their global uh, distribution center for all of their um, guitars. Um, one of our uh, uh, past tenants, recent past tenants, was the Nashville Soccer Club. So when they um, uh, put together their their team initially, they um, they lease space in one of our buildings. So certainly not a, a warehouse tenant, but um, but a soccer team. Um, another is Framus and Warwick. This is a um, a German uh, manufacturing uh, company. They they manufacture primarily guitars. A fascinating company. They uh, we're obviously drawn to um, Nashville because of the, um, the, the the music industry here, and um, and then the final one is uh, is a company called JR Automation, which um, is a um, uh, a member or, or part of Hitachi, which is a um, very large Japanese company, and um, and they employ about eighty um, engineers in their um, in their facility. So that that's just kind of a um, a sample of the type. Um, uh, tenants or customers that, uh, um, that that we cater to, and so I think as far as the um, um, the community is is concerned, I, I think this is an exciting possibility because um, hopefully um, we will be able, or our our customers will be able to um, offer um, 
jobs, quality jobs to, to folks that are, um, you know, living in the immediate area. Um, it's always nice to have a job close by. You don't have to, to drive as far and, um, you know, hopefully to combat uh, traffic. So um, we, we actually hope that we will help the traffic problem um, in, in the area. Um, and lastly, the buildings, as you can see, they're, they're quality um, buildings, and, and we think they're the you know the nicest buildings of their of their sort um, in in the market, and really in the in the southeast, um, you know, for that matter. Um, let me show you specifically why we're coming to you guys tonight. Um, so this is an aerial of um, what is known as Airport. Uh, Commerce Center, Air Park East, and um, Air Park East has been there for probably over 20 years. Um, uh, currently, there are only two buildings um, located in Air Park East, and essentially what, what we're proposing to do is extend um, the cul-de-sac um, uh, east, and you see there where it says new road extension. So, um, and the, the land that is at, um, the topic tonight is, um, highlighted in kind of a reddish color. So it's a, it's a very small parcel, very kind of a sliver of property that we are adding to uh, other property that we currently own. So, um, as you can see, this property has frontage on Ned Shelton. However, um, Per our zoning, um, we will have no access to Ned Shelton, um, nor do we need access to Ned Shelton. So um, the access uh, for this property will be um, the Couchville Pike closer to the airport uh, via uh, Airport Commerce Drive, which is an existing um, drive and kind of snakes around um, uh, up here. So um, again, the, the red um highlighted area is the um is the area that we're talking about and i, I will um submit to you that if or, or by, by us including this we are taking any potential traffic that would be generated from this parcel away from ned shelton so if, if if we don't develop this property the only other access that it has is on ned shelton um and i know that's been a um um of interest to the the community that uh that there not be um uh, additional uh, traffic on um, on Ned Shelton. Um, let's see. I, I, I do know, and I, I'll go ahead and address this just in case it comes up. That, that there has been a, a fair amount of dump truck traffic uh, down, down Ned Shelton, and um, our understanding is that traffic is going to the um, rock quarry. It's located at twenty one thirty two Smith Springs Road. So that's really not. Um, uh, related anything that, that we're doing. I, I think what happens is, um, and I'm just speculating here, but truckers get off of I 40 and use their GPS, and the GPS takes them the quickest route, um, which unfortunately takes them down Ned Shelton. So, um, any dump truck traffic on Ned Shelton is, is, um, is going to that quarry, not to, um, um, in anything that, that we're, uh, we're doing. So, um, the last thing that I will, will uh, address, and I, I think this is hopefully very exciting, is um, a traffic signal will be uh, installed at the corner of Couchville, Pike, and Bell Road, and the, um, uh, co the construction company has, um, has started preliminary work on this traffic signal, and it should be operational by mid um, January. So right after the holidays, hopefully the um, traffic signal will be um, uh, will be operational. Um, we are we are paying for that traffic signal as part of um, of our development. So we're we're funding the uh, the cost of the traffic signal. And um, I'd be remiss to say uh, or not to mention the, uh, the 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 role that Council Lady uh, Porterfield played in this traffic signal. She uh, um, has told me from the very beginning, the first time I met her, that this traffic signal is very important to her. It's very part, important to the community, and um, and, and we we heard her loud and clear. And so, after um, having been in her position for less than a year, she's already um, uh, gotten a traffic signal. So, um, 
um, you know, de definitely believe that she represents the uh, the neighborhood well, and, and we are, we are uh, happy to um, to contribute to um, uh, to this traffic signal and, and this infrastructure. So, um, Council Lady Porterfield, I'll be I'll be happy to answer any questions or uh, from you or from anybody else, but uh, I, I don't want to take any more time than than necessary. So that concludes my comments. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Ditto, and I will give the community the opportunity to uh, ask any questions. I just wanted to um, clarify a few things. I know that, uh, as he said, a big concern um, was access on Ned Shelton. Uh, that's actually, I think when I met Mr. Ditto was uh, before I was elected on council, I was down there planning um speaking against a development that they were having because i didn't want uh access on net shelton and there were concerns about um you know big trucks using um using net shelton um using uh the safety of the people that live on net shelton and making sure that those uh 18 wheelers wouldn't have access to that street and they were able to amend what they were working on to make sure that it wouldn't have access to net shelton um so uh, after uh, working with mr did on this time and seeing the quality of the project that uh, they are bringing forth um this is something that i am supportive of uh i love the idea of bringing more jobs to our community uh, i've actually toured uh, some of their facilities uh, prior to COVID, um, I've gone on tours of their facilities to make sure that this is something that's like a quality pro uh, product. Um, for me, when I think about what we bring to our community, I think about how this will hold up and, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, what will this do to our community and, you know, what will this look like? So I want to make sure that if someone's bringing something to the community, that it's a high quality, a high standard, and that they're not bringing, you know, bad, bad quality uh, things to our community. And just after seeing their various properties, um, it is something that I'm supportive of. Uh, however, Mr. Ditto and any developer that's reached out to me can let you know that um, I always tell them that my biggest thing is what does my community want? Uh, the neighbors on Couch for Pike have all said that this is what they wanted. Um, uh, they are the people that would be the most uh, affected by this. Uh, we don't have a lot of homes uh, near the Casual Pike area. It's really gone from a residential area to a more industrial area. Um, you know, I've talked to planning and, uh, you know, we've made sure that um, whatever zoning we put forth here, that it can't be used for anything that's going to hurt the community. So, you know, there are always questions to make sure that there won't be any environmental concerns or that, you know, any undesirable projects could, could then replace this project. And by doing IWD, although, you know, uh, industrial is typically not a use that people want to see, um, IWD actually is the, where, the warehouse version of um, the industrial. So uh, when we had our, our previous meetings about this uh, before uh, last year, um, we were talking about the shredded facility that was over there. And again, the community was supportive, um, but I always like to make sure that we bring these uh, requests before the community um, so that people have the opportunity to ask any questions. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to go through and uh, quickly address anyone that may have questions about this. Um, and again, if you're just joining us, we are looking at this proposal. We have one more, and then the rest of our meeting will be addressing uh, traffic calming um, as well as concerns with MMPD. Um, so if you're just joining us, you've not missed that portion. I see some new names on the call. You've not missed that portion. Um, Sarah, your hand is up. So we're going to unmute you to give you the opportunity to uh, speak. Hi, uh, John. It's uh, and Delisha. It's it's Jonathan, Sarah's husband. Um, look, it, I mean, it, it sounds very good what you're proposing. What I would like to know is how big a area are you planning to develop? When what kind of space, you know? And also, I know you mentioned that it wouldn't actually affect the the environment, but uh, sometimes these developments actually do affect the environment more than we actually realise. So, how do you tend to kind of address that a little bit? Oh, 
Thank you, sure. Jonathan. I'm gonna let Mr. Ditto address that question. Um, but let me just clarify, uh, when I when I said uh, about the environment, what I meant was, um, in the past, we've seen things like grease plants, we've seen things like um, garbage dumps and uh, garbage transfer stations that uh, people work really hard to fight to make sure that they're not coming into their community. So I, I thank you for saying that, because that gave me the opportunity to kind of uh, flush out what I meant when I made that statement. Um, we know any any building, our homes, our cars, everything we do does have an environmental impact. Um, but uh, I'm very cognizant of making sure that we, we don't bring those type of undesirable projects um, to the district. So thank you for saying that. And Mr. Ditto, I'm going to let you um, address the question. Sure, sure. Well, thank you, Jonathan, for that that uh, question. That, that's a, a very good question. And I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. One is the, the property that we're um, uh, petitioning rezone is about seven acres. Um, so it's not a very large um, piece of property. Um, as far as the environment goes, um, we, we are very concerned about um, any in, impact to the environment. So, um, you know, to the extent that there's, you know, perhaps blue line streams or um, in, any um, endangered species, um, you know, we, we, along with, you know, through the TDEC uh, process and Metro Water. Um, will, um, you know, address any of those concerns. Another thing that we have really um, spent a lot of, of, of effort on is addressing stormwater management. And um, that is both quantity and quality. So um, any water that um, runs um, off of this, uh, of any of, uh, of our developments or any development in Nashville for that matter, um, goes through both water quality and uh, quantity. So it's uh, it's first uh, filtered uh, through a water filtration system, and then it is um, transported to a, another retention pond so that it is um, released into the um, environment in a um, controlled manner. And, um, you know, that's something that I think Nashville's done a, a very good job with um, their, their attention to that. Um, but more than that, I mean, we we love this area. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful area, you know. From from these buildings, you can see the um, you can see the lake, you know, and you, you really feel like you're um, you know you're close to nature. And so, um, you know, we we are um, we obviously have to remove some trees to um, to build these uh, these buildings. But we're going back with um, uh, with, with a good bit of landscaping. Um, the city requires tree buffers. Um, you know, we're adding those as well. So um, um, I, I would say this is a very environmentally friendly um, development. Thank you, John. And Laura has her hand up and then um, it looks like Greg may also have his hand up. And we're going to try to um, uh, be, uh, John, if we can be as concise as and quick as possible. I think okay. most people are here for the uh, the the traffic calming and the uh, the speeding with the police. So we want to make sure that we have enough time to address those concerns. So uh, Laura, we're going to unmute you. Okay, Laura, go ahead. You can hold off on me until you get to the traffic calming. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to mute you. All right, Greg. Let's unmute you. Okay. Okay, great. Um, hi, Mr. Ditto. Uh, just a quick question. I, I'm sure you have to build LEED certified. What um, what level? Um, we, well, we, we do not have to build to LEED certified. Um, and we, we can build to LEED certified, um, but that has not been determined. Um, I mean, as a, pra as a practical matter, um, you know, with these buildings, the, you know, you want to build them as, as um, efficiently as possible. So all the lighting will be LED. Um, HVAC will be, you know, 20 SEER or so. I mean, so it's, th they will be efficient buildings. Okay. So, but you don't have to meet LEED certification. We, we, we do not. That's not a requirement in Nashville. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. Do we have any other questions? If you have a question uh, about this development or if you have something to say in favor or opposition of this development, would you raise your hand for me? Okay, we don't have any hands here. Uh, and what we'll do, and again, this is just for the sake of time, um, up to this point, uh, the only opposition that I've heard 
uh, was someone who had concerns about it going on net, about uh, traffic going on Net Shelton. Um, and we've discussed that there won't be traffic on Net Shelton. Um, this has not gone before council yet, so we still have multiple opportunities to discuss this. So if there's anyone who is in favor or opposition, feel free to uh, email me or call me and we can talk through it more. Uh, right now, again, I am leaning favorably towards it um, unless I hear a lot of opposition from the community. So um, if there's no opposition from the community, we'll move forward with supporting it. It does have to go. Three readings on council and that second reading is a public hearing. So, um, the community will have the opportunity to come out and speak on council uh, at council again in favor or in opposition. Um, but if you, um, uh, have an opinion on it, let me know and, and we could definitely have a conversation. So thank you, Mr. Ditto. Um, we now will, I don't see the property owners. Uh, for the property that is next to Una elementary. Um, if you guys are on the call. Could you please raise your hand? I don't see you all. I'm scrolling through the list here. And Matthew, do you happen to see uh uh it's the Doral family, but I don't I don't see them. Do you happen to see a Doral family? I, I do not. They may have called in via the call in, and if that's the case, I would only see the first six digits of their phone number. Okay, well, in an effort to let me see if I uh, have the first six digits um, and if not, what we will do is. Um, uh, Mr. Doral, Nick, if you're on the call, if you can uh, shoot me an email and let me know the first 3 digits of your phone number. Okay. Is there a 598 uh, 615 598 on the call? Um, what? 598. Uh huh. Sorry, I have to scroll through. They don't show up unless you hover. Okay. I'm not seeing one. So uh, if you're on the call, then please. Um, I, I do not see them on the attendee list under the call in users. I don't see them either. And they wanted to come before the community to to. Let us know their proposal. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information about it. Again, they are just subdividing for uh, it's the parcel right next to uh, unit elementary school. They also initially wanted to do um, wanted uh, industrial zoning uh, planning was not supportive of that project and I was not supportive. Um, it just logistically, it doesn't make sense. It is not safe to put that type of project next to an elementary school um, that that project wouldn't it wouldn't fit on that corner. So uh, if um, you, oh, sorry, if you would like, I can share the uh, proposed plot that they submitted to planning. Yes, that'll be great. Thank you. Uh, so the original um, their original proposal was not um, approved by our planning department. Um, so they then decided to uh, try to subdivide their lot. Um, so that instead of having one large parcel that was subdivided to four smaller parcels. Um, so again, the way that that process goes, that's not something that comes before planning. So um, we as a community can say, you know, no, we don't want them to subdivide it and we can submit that to the planning department. Um, but planning, you know, they have their own criteria. It is um, uh, if they meet the criteria, they do have to be allowed to um, have that uh, subdividing done. And Matthew, if you can just uh, explain that process a little bit, I appreciate it. All right, perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll do a, a quick overview of uh, what the, the plat shows real fast, and then I'll go into the subdivision platting process. So what they're showing is four lots. Uh, the old service station at the corner is going to be lot one, the house behind it, lot two, and both of these are currently zoned commercial. And then lot three is this L-shaped lot that goes over towards the TVA line and makes the L around the school. And then on the other side of the TVA line, you have lot four, and both of these lots are currently zoned residential. Um, and I believe they are zoned residential lot. Residential. Um, R10, so they, they could have um, be further subdivided into 10,000 square foot lots with appropriate. Um, infrastructure provided, but given all of the easements on this, including a. Columbia pipe easement as well as the TVA easement, it would be a challenge to do that. Um, but in terms of the subdivision platting process, every subdivision must meet the subdivision regulations. And so the subdivision regulations state 
that essentially they have to be of they have to have a certain amount of frontage they have to have a certain shape um they have to be a, a, a buildable lot essentially um and in terms of uh, lot sizes all of all of the proposed lots meet the minimum lot size uh that's required under the zoning code so if they meet all the provisions of the subdivision regulations as reviewed by the planning commission then under Tennessee state law, the plant, the, the plat has to be approved. Um, and so that, that's really the quick, the quick explainer on it um, without going too and too far into the weeds on the actual, like, um, meats and meats and potatoes of each and every regulation. But generally, um, if it meets X, Y, and Z of the subdivision regulations, then it must be approved. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Matthew. So again, that is uh, going before planning. Um, as Matthew stated, if they meet the regulations, planning has to um, approve it. Um, if they do come back with another rezoning proposal, then we will get them back uh, in front of um, in front of the community so that they can present that proposal and uh, give you all the opportunity to ask any questions. Um, we're going to now go into traffic calming. Um, and, uh, we have 1 quick question uh, from Jonathan Warburton. Uh, Jonathan, if you don't mind making it really quick. Yeah, it's very, very quick Delisha. Um, okay. um, maybe I was a bit stupid, but when you were talking about the, the, the subdividing the lots, those four, what exactly are they proposing to build there? Because I'm, I'm confused. I don't actually know what it is they're planning to build. What is it a factory? Is it is it a, a nuclear nuclear power station? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So they don't. Uh, so you, you're not required to have a, a a development proposal to do a subdivision plat. And so I, unless Councilman Porterfield knows of anything, um, nothing like that has been submitted. What the what the the current plan shows is that they're going to keep the service station. They're going to keep the house. They're going to tear down an accessory building, and then um, they'll just draw imaginary lines on a map and turn it into the register of deeds to subdivide the property. Um, I think at some point in the future they would have they would need to come back um, and either do a site plan or do a rezoning and then a site plan, depending on what they're they're proposing to do there. Um, but the the subdivision process isn't really where you get into actual development. It just sort of carves up the land. Matthew, is it is currently zoned residential? Is that correct? Yeah. So the um the the the, the front portion along where the the Ellis service station is and that house right behind it that goes down towards the school on Old Murfreesboro, that's currently zoned CS commercial services. But then the larger chunk that goes behind the service station, um, and wraps around the school where those bigger lots were, where the uh, TVA easement is, all of that is currently zoned residential, uh, ten thousand square foot lot minimum. So, so they wouldn't be, so if they, if they were to subdivide it, Jonathan, um, they wouldn't be able to, the only thing they would be able to do on that residential would be, um, would be housing. Like they would be able to put a house on it. They and, and, be, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Matthew. Oh, and, um, and given that they only subdivided the residential portion into 2 lots right now, they could build a maximum of 4 dwelling units, um, because our properties allow for 2 families, uh, 2 family, uh, residences so um like a duplex or something and so only but only one per lot so that will be a maximum of uh four four, four units total so yeah. it's no you know no massive buildings that they wouldn't be able to do anything I, industrial yeah i i don't i don't believe that the um uh, I, I don't believe that they're finished with what they're trying to do after so they'll probably be back before you asking for a rezoning or some other site plan Thank you. And again, if that if that does happen, community, if they do come back and say that they are requesting a rezoning, then we'll get them in front of you all um, to let you all know. But I did want to make sure that everyone was aware because that's going to plan in tomorrow um, to subdivide the property. So I wanted to make sure that you all were aware. Uh, we're now going to go to Derek Haggerty, who's going to talk about traffic calming, and then we'll also let um, I see Sergeant White's on the call. Um, I believe Sergeant. Um, 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 uh, excuse me, uh, Sergeant Raphael is on the call as well. So I'll give you guys the opportunity to speak. And I know that people have a lot to say and a lot of questions about traffic comment. So I anticipate a lot of hands. I know at least one of our uh, callers who's called in uh, has some comments about uh, traffic calming and, and police as well, Matthew. So we'll make sure to um, hit our callers as well. So uh, Derek, we're gonna start with you. Uh, 
All right, thank you very much. And I just want to start by giving a brief overview of our traffic calming program, keep it really short so we can get to the questions. But in 2019, Nashville really revamped our neighborhood traffic calming program. Prior to that, it was mostly just striping and signage, which can help, but the new program really focuses on physical measures. So because of that, we're seeing much better results, but our price per project is higher. Uh, you know, as the mayor said earlier, in the grand scheme of transportation projects, these come in at about fifty, sixty thousand dollars, which is definitely on the lower end for some of these big street projects we see. You know, much cheaper than traffic signal, uh, but you know, there's still a price involved. Uh, so the way the program works, because demand currently outpaces our funding, we ask that neighborhoods apply to the program. We collect data on those neighborhoods and then we prioritize them. So right now we currently have 100 neighborhoods that have applied. Uh, and we prioritize those based on three categories. We score them on a 100 point system, 40 points goes to the crash history. We pull all the old police records for crashes. 30 points goes to the measured speeds. We'll actually come out on the street, lay tubes out, collect speeds. Then finally, 30 points goes to neighborhood characteristics. A lot of things in this category, but big ones are lack of sidewalks and those neighborhoods one through 176. And we just start working down the list as funding will allow. Um, and really the big thing that we have going for us now is that we have so many applications. You know, the mayor said he's heard you all loud and clear. And that's because we've had 176 neighborhoods reach out, say, this is something we want. This is something that we think will make the neighborhood better. Uh, so as part of that, the office is currently working on a, I think it's a 10 year transportation plan, you know, trying to lay a, lay out what the next 10 years will look like for transportation in Nashville. And a part of that is gonna be funding the traffic calming program at a much higher level to match the demand that we're seeing. So that's just a really quick overview of the program. You know, our whole goal is to work with physical traffic calming measures. So we're actually gonna put things in the street that are able to slow down. Um, with that, I can open it up for questions. And if you know, anyone wants more detail, just please let me know. Derek, if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is we're going to let MMPD speak and then we'll open it up for questions for uh, both MMPD and traffic calming because some of those questions may overlap. Perfect. Uh, so do we have a representative from the aggressive driving unit? If you could speak first and then if we can have our uh, sergeants from uh, Hermitage and South to speak, I appreciate it. Okay, Sergeant White, we're going to go ahead and unmute you. Yes, I saw the other Sergeant from the aggressive driving here earlier, so maybe he'll log back on. It looks like he just disappeared, but it's Sergeant McDougal. But uh, my name is Sergeant White. I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator for Hermitage Precinct. And the biggest thing we need, and we'll let him talk uh, here a little bit about the aggressive driving, the unit, kind of the also the initiatives they have on the weekends, uh, talk about street racers and other uh, just what we're talking about, the aggressive drivers with the, the drivers passing everybody in the center lane. Uh, but kind of going to on us, uh, anytime you see that, don't hesitate to call the 862-8600 number to let us know. That way we can go out there uh, and hopefully we're in the area and we can catch them and see it. I went back and I looked, I think this year already, I think we're averaging about one a month where we're doing extra patrols, whether it's traffic enforcement, which mainly it's traffic enforcement or other top enforcement, whether it's a specific location or intersection. Uh, and kind of thankfully, uh, traffic enforcement is uh, the biggest com complaint we get all in Davidson County and uh, especially in your neighborhood. The only other real complaint we get uh, in your community besides uh, traffic and parking complaints, which is the speeding, the reckless driving, uh, is uh, gunshots during the night. And we've gotten a few videos with that and we pass that out to our detectives, uh, try to go out and collect that evidence and get that, which trying to give you an all over uh, sc scope of the, the whole uh, council district, not just the one, the traffic enforcement that we're working on there, but, uh, 
we know about it. Continue to call us, 862-8600 number. Uh, we have officers out there, and after Sergeant Fernandez uh, speaks just a moment, we'll get back and see if Sergeant McDougal's here with the aggressive driving, and then we'll take uh, questions. Thank you, and I do see Sergeant McDougal. So, um, Sergeant um, uh, Raphael, if you could speak, and then uh, next we'll have um, Sergeant McDougal. Thank you. Uh, you should be unmuted now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Very good. I appreciate you inviting me to this meeting. Uh, even though we only uh, uh, only a portion of District 29 is is out in the South uh, Precinct area, it's kind of unique in that uh, Anderson Road where where you're having a lot of issues. Uh, it really splits uh, South Precinct and Hermitage Precinct. So when you get when we ask for uh, get asked for extra patrol out there. Uh, whether they send it to me or Sergeant White, I always get with him and say, hey, look, this is kind of close to your area. Uh, can you see if you can provide some extra patrol out in that area? So that's that's something that we do and he has done the same. So uh, that area actually gets a lot of coverage because it is it does split us up uh, for a couple of miles there before, uh, you know, we go our own way over on Smith Springs Road. But uh, definitely I, I'm mirroring uh, everything uh, Sergeant White said about calling us when you have some issues some concerns in that area so we know where to put our officers. We won't know where our officers need to go unless you complain and say, hey, we're having some issues out in that area. Uh, and also the traffic and parking are, are the biggest complaints. And, and I think that's a consensus among all the community coordinators is traffic, uh, parking issues, speeding, and we do get some issues as well as uh, uh, gunshots in the uh, outer outer areas of, of the county uh, when it comes to us on uh, off of Nolensville Road out in that area near the county line. But uh, uh, please let us know, like Sergeant White says, whenever there's something going on in that area so we know what kind of issues we have and, and so we can send our officers out to those areas. Thank you so very much. Sergeant McDougal, we're going to uh, unmute you. Yep, yeah, uh, you should be unmuted now. All right, yes, can you hear me? All right, I'm Sergeant James McDougal and I'm with the uh, traffic unit here with the Metro National Police Department. Um, you know, we, we've been dealing with this issue uh, for, for quite a while. Um, prior to coming to traffic, I was actually in South Precinct as a supervisor and, um, you know, we were dealing with the, um, the aggressive driving um, through that, um, during that time on the weekends. Um, it's, it's definitely, um, it, it's a big issue here um, and we've really, um, started to focus now um, on our efforts. Uh, we're working with um, the um, Tennessee Highway Patrol, uh, you know, using their helicopter, uh, which can actually track the, the vehicles further than, than our helicopter can. Um, we're also, um, we're, we're working with the troopers also, uh, and um, we're working with our undercover units to, um, you know, a, a lot of our, um, information that we get is based on the intel. Uh, so we're watching what's going on on the uh, um, social media post, and then we're trying to be there prior to the event. Uh, we're also um, working with all the precincts. So we're pulling in officers to have, um, you know, special initiatives going on through the weekends uh, to, to try and, uh, you know, curb this issue. Uh, we've, we've made several arrests at this point um, yeah, for example, last weekend, um, you know, we made a felony arrest, um, and there were several other arrests for drag racing, um, uh, for speeding. So, uh, we're working with the district attorney's office to, um, you know, prosecute and, um, you know, trying to make, um, them, the, the racers realize that, hey, this safe, unsafe behavior, uh, you know, it, it is not going to pay. So. Uh, we're also working to, um, we, we've tracked um, some of the vehicles, um, you know, the helicopters can, can get some license plates and we're able to, you know, track the owners back to the residents. Um, uh, for example, we had one who um, was a, a, a teenager, or probably about 18 or 19, but still lives with his parents. So, you know, we were able to say, hey, this is the behavior your son was doing. We were able to actually show him from the video that the helicopter took. And, um, you know, we got some, um, you know, positive reactions from that. So uh, we're working hard on it. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're actually going to be out there this weekend. So 
But. Thank you. Thank you yep. so much. Um, uh, Sergeant and Sergeant Fernandez and Sergeant White, uh, we appreciate you all so much. We're going to allow the community to um, ask some questions. I do have just a few that that will probably come up a lot. So um, if you three can, um, you know, whoever can answer this question, uh, what should the neighbors do when they, um, if they are aware? Uh, so, you know, sometimes people will say that they recognize the car. Um, they'll say that, you know, I know the house where this person lives. So how should they actually report that to you all if they're seeing this happen? Um, another thing that we hear uh, frequently, and again, we will have the, the neighbors will have the opportunity to share this um, themselves, but I just want to get out a couple of frequently asked questions, so to speak, um, to, to help save time a little bit. Um, another concern that we hear is, you know, of course, when, when uh, we know that you guys are doing the best that you can, but we also know that you're understaffed. So when, you know, there is a call that, you know, there's speeding happening or someone's drag racing, you know, on Anderson or Orndale or Priest Lake, um, when they make the call, by the time an officer gets out, of course, the individuals are long gone. Um, so sometimes people don't see the value in making that call. So if you could just, you know, reiterate why that's uh, important that they continue to call. And if you guys want to speak to that, um, after that, we'll go ahead and start taking questions on um, either uh, traffic calming or the uh, speeding and aggressive driving. I will take either questions, but I'll start with the second question first. And this is Sergeant White. Uh, on the, the calls, and it does take us time. Yes, it does take us time because we have to prioritize our call. And even though it's important, it's dangerous. Uh, and, and as you said, we know they could be gone quickly in that case. Uh, but we have to do with people being shot, uh, persons with guns. Uh, domestics take up uh, uh, quite a bit of our time, which they should, because that's very, very important for us and aggravated assaults are. So the real question is, why should you still continue to do that? And the reason you should is, for one, uh, it generates a call each time you do it. It has the information in there of the car, especially if you know where it belongs to, where it's at, where you can go back and pull that. But also, it might be that one in a million chance where there's an officer right there at the inter one intersection up. So without everybody in the neighborhood being the eyes and ears of the police department, we're only about, I don't even know the number, we're only about 1,350 officers. But uh, especially in your community and probably in your district, there's many, many more than that. So we just need all the eyes and ears and to be able to uh, get to the calls right when they're there, right when they're happening and when we're there so we know that. Uh, it is true that it just depends on the activity that they're doing and what else is going on, but I think it's the same thing uh, that we do every day. We go out there, do the best we can uh, with the resources we have, and sometimes we catch them, sometimes we don't. But if we didn't try to go out there and do it, then nothing gets done at all. So I think it is frustrating. Trust us, it's frustrating for us too. But without that information, nothing can be done. Thank you so much. Uh, do either of the other sergeants want to uh, chime in on on, the, on those questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. The uh, this is Sergeant Fernandez. Uh, calling in is uh, is very important because somebody could call in on a tag or a car, and uh, even though the chances are the officer will not will not be out in that area, like uh, Sergeant White said, uh, that's something that can be can be looked at again. It, it's going to be recorded forever, so that that recording is going to be there. And we'll be able to go back to that recording and say, hey, you know, somebody called in a couple of days ago on a certain vehicle in that area uh, around this date and time. And they'll have a dispatcher or somebody uh, research that and pull up that information. So we're able to get some of that information uh, regarding a, uh, an issue, whether it's speeding or whether it's a, a suspicious person call or a car out in that area. So calling is very important and giving us uh, giving us that information is very important as well because an officer will remember that and say hey you know i remember something about a red car out in this area and ask the dispatcher for it so please don't hesitate to call and let us know about those things because those things can be uh, uh looked back on and and we'll be able to pull that information up again it's very important thank and you and also oh sir go ahead no go ahead i was going to go back to the first question take sergeant mcdougall's thunder here from him 
Also, uh, the question you said about reporting a certain house or a person, a certain person or a certain vehicle. If you go to uh, the Nashville.gov or I Google everything, so just Google Nashville police. If you go to our front page on the right hand side under I want to, there's a reported aggressive driver criminal activity possible. So you can click on that. And if you don't want to call the 862 time, don't uh, click on that link. It'll take you to one of our online forms that was that is reporting an aggressive driver. And you can put all that information in there that you know. And once that goes out, that goes to our traffic unit and the aggressive driving unit and our um, our fatal teams. Uh, that way they have that information and they can also follow up with that. And that's what Sergeant McDougall was talking about, about being able to go to those houses and those locations. And the better the description, the tag number it is, especially if they see it somewhere else that night or somewhere, they actually know where to go back to. So that is the absolute best place to report if you know names, tag numbers, addresses, is on uh, the Nashville.gov Police Department website under report aggressive driving. Click on that, then go to report an aggressive driver and put all the information you have in there. Yes, and and I'll add on to that. We, we do check that daily here. Um, and if you, you want, you can also just Google uh, the MNPD traffic unit and we have a number and you can leave a message that um, with that to, you know, say, hey, you know, this is what's going on at night. And um, the goal is to really, from what I found in my experience with it, the goal is to be there before they get there. Because um, once we can be there, then they leave. And, you know, um, that, that's, that's really the main goal. Um, just so they're not in the neighborhoods and um, in the business districts um, where we've we've found them here recently. Thank you, guys. We'll go ahead and start going to questions. The first one, uh, the first person I'm going to unmute will be Laura. Um, she's had her hand up for a while, and then after that, we're going to go to Raquel. Um, if there's anyone else that wants to speak, please make sure to put your hand up, and we will go to the individuals that have called in as well. Uh, so, Laura, you should be unmuted. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. I want to thank you, first of all, for the help that you gave us with getting rid of the multi families that were living in a duplex and making so many loud parties outdoors. They have moved away. Also, um, I just wanted to make sure on the news tonight, they've talked about Bell Road and Murfreesboro Road, and I wanted to make sure and I think that's been answered that Anderson is also one of the problem roads and it seems like they they start about shift um, when the shift changes thanks thank you so much for sharing that laura and we're going to unmute raquel hello yeah. miss porterfield i'm my name is daryl hampton and uh, raquel is my wife um, I just had a quick question about the 10 year transportation plan as well as uh, how it relates to traffic calming. Are there any plans to widen Bell Road from Murfreesboro Pike going toward 40? Uh, as you know, currently that's two lanes and especially in light of the, the industrial project that we just heard about, uh, I assume that there's uh, additional development coming. So what, what is the city's view of widening Bell Road? I, I think it could use at least another two lanes. Um, we have two individuals here from Public Works. Um, I know you asked with respect to traffic calming. I know traffic calming is in the residential area, so I'm not sure if um, our representative from traffic common will be able to answer that question. Uh, but Mr. Haggerty, if you or Mr. Honeysucker are able to um, uh, provide any insight on that, I would appreciate it. And if not, uh, Mr. Hampton, if we can't get an answer tonight, if you will send that to me in an email, I'll make sure that Public Works um, gets back to you. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely. Unfortunately, that is a little outside of my day today, but uh, I'll save everyone the time on the email and I'll make sure I ask it first thing, tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning and get back with the council member. 
I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Hampton, if you could still just shoot me an email so that I can have your contact information so that I can get back to you directly. Um, I want to make sure to answer that. Uh, Mr. Doral, I see you on the call. Um, after we address the uh, the police, continue with the police and the traffic comment, we will definitely come back to you. Uh, we did present uh, your information that we had on the subdividing the property. We presented uh, as much as we have. So we will, uh, we will go come back to you and give you the opportunity to speak. We we just want to make sure that we have enough time to um, address the police and traffic coming. Laura, your hand is up again. Did you want to speak again? <clears throat> okay. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, Mr. Dunn again. Uh, we're going to unmute you. Great. Thank you, Councilwoman. <clears throat> Thank you, officers, uh, sergeants. Um, two quick things. Uh, uh, you may already do this. I think I think you do. Uh, I was very happy to hear that you have been able to make some arrests on aggressive driving. Uh, if there is any way to increase the promotion or awareness that that has happened, I think that might help a little bit. I believe that some of the reasons for the increase in aggressive driving is people are, are aware that uh, unfortunately you're very understaffed. Um, there isn't a precinct here yet, so I think it's a safe place for them to operate. Um, so I think that might help combating that if if uh, they themselves started to hear that some of these people are getting arrested. Uh, it would also, you know, maybe ease a little bit of the resident's mind knowing that uh, you are uh, getting some of this done, that it actually does happen. Um, I'm, I'm the beautification commissioner for this district. So if you had stuff like that, I, I would be happy to further push it out to the community. Um, and speaking of that, I, I want to be honest to the community. So I wanted to make a statement to them, but I, I wanted to ask you if, if this is correct, at least in your opinion. Um, would more reports of aggressive driving help you and the proponents that want to get this precinct built? In other words, if, if, if the powers that be are seeing how many calls are coming in, legitimate ones, real ones, does that help the cause of, a new pre of the precinct? Okay, I'll answer this. This is Sergeant White again. I think the 100% issue with the new precinct is strictly financial. That's absolutely it. It's there. I think they even have the plans. I think it is strictly the yeah. city knows by far that we need it, that it's needed there. So the two issues and part of it's financial, but the two issues are one is having the staff to staff it and two is having the money to build it. So if we had both of those things, I think it would already be built. Uh, it, it's just the delay in that. Now, what the increased calls do help out with, though, is how many officers we have in each area, because once a year, twice a year, I call it the big brain. The computer downtown takes all the information in, and it kind of divides up resources based on calls for service and where calls come in and what type of calls they are. So, yes, the more reports or the more calls reports are generated uh, on issues, that's part of the consideration of it. Also, another part is the crime reports too. Uh, there's a lot of other population, a lot of stuff goes into it, but uh, it doesn't hurt at all. If it's something we can use, great, we use it. And as uh, Sergeant Fernandez said, if it's something we don't use, at least we still have the information there. Great, thank you, Sergeant. You're welcome. And this is Sergeant McDougall again. If I can just add on um, to what you asked about with the uh, information about people getting arrested, um, we know that it is spreading throughout, um, I guess, their social media right now that, um, you know, we are making arrests um, and, you know, they are being prosecuted at this point. So um, that that's the good thing that word is actually spreading throughout um, their little community there. Excellent. Great to hear, Sergeant. Thank you. And if we have any parents on the call um, of uh, individuals who, uh, if you know that that your child may be some of the individuals that are participating in this, if you could, you know, help spread the word and talk, uh, talk to them to to let them know, of course, how dangerous it is and how disruptive it is to the community, it will be really helpful. You know, really takes all of us on all fronts um, sharing this information. Um, I know we have a, a, at least one of our call in uh, callers that wants to speak. Is there anyone else? Um, on the app that wants to speak if so, please raise your hand. Um, okay, Matthew, if you could please unmute um, one of the call-ins 
the number starts with uh, 615. Sorry, let me get it here. Uh, 645, 615, excuse me, 948. If you can unmute the number that starts with 948. Your, uh, that caller is now unmuted. Thank you. Uh, Karen, are you still with us? Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hi, Sergeant Fernandez, Sergeant White, and Hello. Derek with traffic calming. This is Karen Hello. Van Cleve. Hello, I, I live on Owendale. Y'all know I live on Owendale. You know I blow you guys' phones up. I call. All of my neighbors called. I live here. 31 years. I've got neighbors that's lived here for 40 years. We've all been here a long time. They opened up Hamilton Church and Owendale became the big cut through. I did traffic calming. I went to the meeting. I filled an application out. We didn't qualify. The lines never came in the 400 block. They were down in the 2900 block. They never actually took care of the 400 block. We have speeders. Starting at three o'clock in the morning, do you think I get any sleep? Absolutely not. My bedroom is in the front. They speed all day, all night. Do I call? I'm tired of calling. I'm still waiting for the police officer that I called nine months ago and said, I'd like to speak to you, has not showed up at my door yet. This is an ongoing thing with Owendale. They're building on Hamilton Church. They're building further down into Laverne. Murfreesboro Road gets backed up. Hey, I'm gonna sh shoot down. We can go right through Owendale because guess what? We put a red light because it was so dangerous at Bell Road in Mossdale. We put a red light, but guess what? They can skirt right on through there. In the mornings, I cannot get out of my driveway. And if I try, they beat their horn at me like I'm doing something wrong. Do we call on Owendale anymore? Nope, we'd have to be on that phone all day long. I work. I can't call all day long. We're tired. We are tired of Owendale being the cut through, the 40, the 50, the 60, and these little cars with all these little mufflers that are going about 80 miles an hour down our street. A kid's gonna get killed because we have more children on the other end. We have a curve, we have a bend. We need help on Owendale and we need it now. Yes. We don't see police officers around. We called, we called, we're just, we're like throwing our hands up. We're done. Yes, ma'am. I know that's that's very difficult. And uh, I, I will set up some extra patrol or traffic enforcement out in that area again. I'm going to send it to the officers and let them know that that's something that's starting at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I think Owendale also is part of uh, Hermitage Precinct as well. So uh, I think we can, uh, we can go ahead and set something up again and let the officers know that it's very, very bad out there again. Okay? And I'm sorry that's going well, on. We there was a police officer the other day because somebody stole something out of my neighbor's garage and I went over there and I talked to him. And while he was standing there, the cars, they didn't care. His police car was sitting there. They're well, flying and you. he's watching them. I believe you. Some people don't care that there's a police officer around. Uh, they're just going to do it anyway. They figure we're busy and that we're not going to stop what we're doing to, to chase them. So uh, uh, definitely that's something. So why, can't we, why can't we put undercover police officers on this street? The other day, yesterday, and I, I uh, text Delisha because we've been having so many problems. Um, a cement truck went so fast down our street, which cement trucks are illegal. They cannot be on residential because we're having a new subdivision built. He went so fast down the street. We asked the neighbor next door who had a ring phone or a ring doorbell thing. Could she get the name of it? That truck went so fast. Luckily, it had its big name on the side. And I actually followed it over to where it was at. I drove over there and seen it. We had a dump truck and these big, huge trucks, they're not doing 30 miles an hour. And this is all day long. So I know the police are not even patrolling. And you guys say, we'll send somebody out. We'll send somebody out. We don't see nobody. Only because my neighbor had to file a report that somebody stole something. Right. You guys just keep giving us the same song and dance here on Owendale. And we're really getting tired of it. And I understand, I know you guys are shorthanded, but traffic calming, is it gonna take somebody to get killed? That's how we got the four-way stop at Owendale. 
in Anderson because somebody finally got killed there. Well, and this is Sergeant White. And on that side of Owendale or on the north side of Owendale from uh, Anderson, that's Hermitage Precinct. Uh, with For the undercover cars, we'll have to get with Sergeant McDougal. And since he's on here, I'm, I'm taking notes, so I'm sure he's taking notes. So he can write I that am. down and ask that. Um, with our two traffic cars that we have at Hermitage Precinct, uh, especially when the worst time it happens during the morning hours and the evening rush hours, that's when they're answering traffic calls or uh, traffic crashes. But we can also request them for that. Unfortunately for Hermitage Precinct, right about now, uh, we're running about 10 to 15 calls, uh, I wouldn't say behind, but that are pending in priority until about our evening hours and kind of in the evening night hours, it, it goes above that. So it is a priority. It's just us, that fine line between us not answering uh, or going to the report calls uh, and out there doing the enforcement. The officers do a tremendous job in, in kind of keeping that balance out there. But exactly like Sergeant Fernandez said, uh, we'll put it in and starting at zero three, I'll let our overnight officers also know, and then let send it to our eighty tail and our BD tail too. And unfortunately, with the extra patrols, uh, they get out there when they can. Because I think right now I did the, uh, I'm on like three hundred and seven. I think is what I did today for for extra patrols uh, for prowlers, all that. But and I agree. Uh, Going on with the traffic uh, calming with that, it does take the three parts of it. And I think one of the other parts uh, we're missing is also the education. And whether it's through the school system or through the state is another aspect we need to look at exactly what you're talking about, about somebody getting hurt or killed. Most teens and probably even me when, when I was that age or young adults uh, didn't think about the consequences of other stuff. So that's another aspect we need to work harder on is the education part of it also. Right, and the sad thing, we can't even give you a car description. All we can say is, oh, there was a car that just flew down the street. We would have a to blur. call. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's it, and, it's getting, and, and it's getting worse. And, you know, COVID had stopped um, because, you know, school's not in. And I thought, oh, that's great. We're not going to have that much traffic. Oh, and back when the mayor closed our street down for the traffic calming, oh, my gosh, they ran the signs over. They threw the signs in people's yards. And they were all over Facebook. And how dare they close Owendale down and somebody has to go down a different street. That that just amazed me. Yeah. Just amazed me. Uh, unfortunately, Ms. Kieran, I know that, that that was very frustrating for me as well because our community has been asking for traffic calming. I mean, virtually every corner of our community has asked for traffic calming. And um, even though it was a temporary effort, um, we were chosen uh, when many others were not. And, um, you know, there were a lot of communities that they looked at and it was really uh, a big deal that our community was chosen for something like that. And uh, unfortunately, many of our neighbors were upset that um, that, that happened. And um, we got, uh, I think Mr. Haggerty could speak a little more on it, but we had some very disgruntled neighbors who were uh, intentionally destroying the signs and the cones. Um, and I've even received reports now they've done it for the second time. Uh, we do have a mm -hmm. part of Nashboro Woods that's blocked off uh, for the slower streets program. And um, uh, another part of our district is also blocked off right now. And neighbors have reported that um, individuals have been driving over the cones and um, they they don't want to comply with the with what we've tried to put in place. So that is definitely very uh, frustrating. So thank you for for sharing all of those. Um, Nick, I see you've turned your camera on. We, we're going to get to you in just one second. I know we're over time, guys. Um, we're going to see if we just I'm have. Sorry, one I'm done. No, it's okay, Ms. Karen. I appreciate I appreciate it so much um, for you uh, giving that information. Uh, I did want to tell the sergeants as well. Um, Owendale, Mossdale, Anderson, Murfreesboro Road. Um, those are some of the ones that uh, that are being reported a lot for the drag racing. Um, uh, Priest Lake. I've been recently told that Priest Lake has uh, had been having some, and it cleared up, and they started back. Uh, Butler Road is another one that we've been hearing about, and I live off of Castlegate, and I hear it all day, every day as well. Um, so I'm assuming, especially overnight, I should say, I shouldn't say during the day, but I, I hear it uh, primarily overnight. Um, so we suspect that there may be something going on on Smith Springs Road as well. 
Um, if we have anybody else that uh, wants to ask a question to MMPD or to traffic comment, we'll try to take one more really quick we, question. Oh, Councilman Porfield, we only have two other call-in users remaining. Do you want me just to run through those real quick just to, so they have the opportunity? Yes, thank you. So 615-516, 615-516, you're now unmuted if you want to ask a question. Okay. And now um, for the last call and user, uh, 615-525, you're now unmuted if you'd like to ask a question. Okay, so that concludes the call and users. Okay, so this is the last call. If there's anyone else that's actually using the app that wants to ask a question for MMPD or um, traffic comm. And again, we are over time. So uh, we appreciate you guys for, for sticking on with us just a few more minutes. Um, if there's anyone else, this is your last call. And if not, we're going to allow Nick um, to really briefly tell us about uh, what he's going to be discussing with planning or with their, the request that they're making with planning. Okay, no additional questions. Um, thank you so much for uh, MMPD for being on the call. Thank you Public Works for being on the call. We appreciate you guys so much. Nick, we're gonna go ahead and unmute you and give you the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman Porterfield. Just to uh, real quick say to the MMPD, uh, we own the 2000 and 2002 old Murfreesboro Pike right there at Smith Springs. Uh, they're the old filling station, hadn't been in use for years since 85, but either way, I uh, just wanted to say if drag racing or any kind of racing is happening or, you know, any of that, y'all are welcome to sit on that corner. Um, there's, you know, a good shot going down Smith Springs. Uh, y'all are welcome to use that corner for radar or anything else if that helps. Uh, we aren't currently, uh, it's a small wood shop in there, but we're not currently using it for the most part. And y'all are welcome to set up there if that does help. Uh, Thank you back to actually what we're trying to do to the property is subdivide it. I've never actually done this, so this is my first time. I don't know if I should just kind of explain myself on what I want to do, or do y'all have questions? Ms. Porterfield, do you recommend yeah. anything? Yeah, if you could just explain what it is that you were wanting to do. Uh, Matthew explained pretty much the, the process of subdividing a, a policy and that if it meets the state criteria, um, you know, public, uh, planning will approve it. Um, there were some questions about which I wanted to do with the, with the property. So if you don't mind uh, sharing that, we'd appreciate hearing about it. Uh, certainly. Okay. So the front part of uh, the property, the part that uh, fronts old Murfreesboro Road is already a commercial uh, zoning that encompasses the old filling station there, as well as the house that sits there. Uh, we've renovated and kind of fixed up both of those. We're working on the shop a little bit. Um, once those are functional, we'll use them. We've been held up quite a bit uh, because we're putting in sewer. Uh, we didn't realize when we purchased the property, it had a septic tank, septic field, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we got rid of it, didn't realize the complexity of what was going to have to happen in order to get sewer. It's a high pressure sewer line there on Smith Springs, and there's only one place that can actually be tapped. So we hired CEC Civil Engineering to work up a plan to create a you know, infrastructure plan to put in sewer. Uh, we've gotten to the point where we've been approved for that. At this point, that would uh, give us sewer that would actually go down almost 2,000 feet. Uh, so if we subdivide this property into the four lots that we're asking for, um, we're responsible for putting in the sewer that would go all the way down Smith Springs. And so we are um, wanting to currently get the sewer in place for lot one and two, which is the house and the shop. Uh, lot three and four are the back two parcels. Um, we're wanting to go ahead and get the engineering in place. We are not exactly certain what we're trying to do there, except that it's zoned residential. And so everything we do with the property currently, um, my mother owns the old shop and I own the house. Uh, they have a, a med my wife works for my mother um it's a family business but we also have a metal business so they mostly um it's hasn't even to this date been done from there but it will be purchasing metal um not really fabricating on site but mostly it goes to the airport so there are some trucks that come and go from there 
Um, there'll be some people that'll park during their off hours. Uh, but essentially, my mother is a small woman in business who, uh, for the most part, is focused on working the airport area and has most of her jobs for the next couple of years lined up there. Um, what we're wanting to do is have the ability that lot three, which would be right behind um, the building, kind of makes an L shape and goes behind the school, would be at the furthest point of that, there's a where it joins with lot four would be where it exits on Smith Springs. Um, we're wanting to divide it so that we have the ability, if she wanted to purchase lot three, she would further that so she could have more room to do her business. Um, lot four is probably the best developable lot. Um, we've talked about doing a warehouse. We've talked about doing some uh, storage. We're not exactly certain. Uh, we're not in a residential mindset. It's not anything we've done. We don't do new construction. This is our first kind of venture into this whole realm. But at the same time, it's not going to be residential. At least that's not what we're wanting to do. And so uh, being that we already have a business there and it's based on being commercial, we're wanting to extend it, you know, to have the availability. Currently, it's not, you know, it wouldn't be correct to bring in trucks off of the Smith Springs side, the lower area where there's already, a, you know, an access and gravel and what could be an entry, I guess, um, without it being the right zoning. And so we don't want to do anything you know, incorrectly. We're not trying to bend the rules. We're just wanting to be able to use the land that we have. We've owned it for four or five years now. Um, we've worked with, um, you know, there's been a, there's a gas line that we allowed to go through there that will, you know, actually uh, it functions for a large part of Nashville, I guess, with Piedmont uh, natural gas. There's also a colonial pipeline that we just put through there. Um, beyond that, there's the um, TVA easement that goes through there. Um, but last, what we're implementing, which is a benefit to the community, is um, we're putting in sewer that would run down almost 2,000 feet, which would be a, um, in a public right away. And then we're putting a pump, uh, pump house, I guess they call it. Um, so it'll be a force main system that gets tied in. But ultimately, the other neighbors potentially could tie into that. I'm not exactly certain how all that works, but I do know that um, with what we've submitted to public works it is a system that could be tied on to so either way um, it's an expansion of the public's you know city sewer and i think is a, a huge you know bonus just in itself beyond that what we're trying to do is make it a small business park the nashville airport logistics is across the street on a very minimized version vision of that it would be something similar several businesses that kind of intertwine with a little you know road that goes down through there, um, you know, for the most part, um, it would be a five-year plan to develop for the most part. And, um, you know, that's kind of about it. Thank you for uh, sharing that. And I did, I did want to clarify the request that's going before planning tomorrow is only to subdivide the parcels. So any rezoning request would have to um, go through that process. And again, we have a, a community meeting to discuss that. So I just want to make sure that it's really clear to our constituents that what is going before planning is only for them to be able to subdivide that property. Um, as it stands, the planning department is not, uh, from my understanding, they're not supportive of uh, rezoning that to any type of industrial. Um, and I, I know that it can get a little tricky, you know, when you see that the airport park is, you know, in such close proximity, um, you know, sometimes it, it, it feels as though, you know, I'm on one side of the street, why can't I do it over here? And they could do it over there. Um, I think one key difference is the, the proximity to the elementary school. And I know that uh, some parents um, and, and individuals from the school have reached out to me with a lot of concerns about what a rezoning um, to industrial would mean being so close to the school. So, um, I can't support um, going to an industrial, um, being in that close proximity to the school. And again, that's not something that planning uh, is supportive of. But, um, you know, uh, Mr. Doral, I, I understand, you know, when you own property, you want to be able to, to do something with it. And you guys have, have owned it for a while. So, you know, we definitely don't want to preclude you from um, being able to benefit off of the property that you own. So, um, you know, if there are, are, are other proposals that, you know, you're able to, to do 
you know, I'm willing to continue to, to meet with you. Um, you could come before the community again. You know, we can even have a, a community, and I'll give you a chance to, to rebuttal in one moment, but uh, you can come before the community again to hear from the community about maybe something that they would be willing to see um, on their corner or something that they would like to see. Um, I know that gas station is on the uh, the historical uh, uh, registry. So I'm not even sure the uh, National Register of Historic Places. Um, so I'm not sure, and Matthew maybe could speak a little bit to that as well. So I'm not sure of what can even be done on that, that front parcel with that being a historic building. Um, but uh, Mr. Doral, I'll give you the opportunity to, to rebuttal. And then uh, Matthew, if you wanna chime in briefly, um, I appreciate it. Thank you there. Um, so two things that, you know, I guess jumped out. One is we're not wanting to do industrial. I guess there was talks about it just to see based off of what's across the street with American Farms, the American Logistics, the Metro across the street, um, the, you know, there's quite a few of them. We realized that our parcel on the front is that attaches to the school already is commercial. Um, and so in this conversation, I, I wasn't even gonna approach the industrial, I believe that after speaking to planning, speaking to you in previous conversations, I realized that the city doesn't want to see industrial there. There are some major um, setbacks as well as you know buffer zones that are put in place when you do have that kind of designation. At the same time, that's not even what I'm requesting right now. Um, in this particular conversation, it is based on actually just wanting to subdivide. We. Um, my mother has the corner. Um, we've already struck a deal. It's already been done. At the same time, I can't um, legally sign her over the part that she's paid me for because of not having it subdivided into the smaller subdivided portions. And so there becomes the first thing. The second part became she has a business that's growing and she wanted to be able to buy additional parcels to be able to attach and do future business within what she's already doing there. Um, and so again, that's where that began to have it kind of subdivided. It's a larger parcel, it's 9.3 acres. So it doesn't make sense for a lot of reasons to have that kind of, and it's the topographical layout of the land doesn't really, it's not a very flat area. So it's just not a very good uh, use of nine acres for that point. And so we tried to make it where the, the lots would break up into usable areas. Um, there's been um, talks at one point to even speak to the school to see was there interest with them wanting to purchase one of the lots three or four um, that hasn't been continued and I'm not saying that's on the table at it, you know, but there has been at least communication a couple years ago. Um, but again, we're not wanting industrial. We are only wanting uh, commercial, which is what we already have. Um, I think that's a, a good kind of meet in the middle. Um, but in order for us to want to to do the you know development of the lot three and four it doesn't again we we aren't residential builders so we're not going to want to just you know we don't know what we would do with it if we don't get the rezone at a later date again this is your first you know community meeting so again and first one i've ever done too so I, i'm this is new didn't realize exactly what the process was and if that would be something we would i should be talking about or if this was only for the uh subdivision of the lots just because of the fact that there hasn't been a uh, prior really, you know, opportunity to do this. And so with that, um, we are wanting to obviously go to the commercial. We are wanting to do the four. Um, and, you know, I guess that's kind of all I wanted to say. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. And um, and I and thank you for clarifying that you're not looking to do the industrial there. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the community knew where I stood with it. And I know that, you know, uh, Mr. Dora, we, we spoke in and, um, and I, I mentioned it before uh, you were able to get on the call. Anytime a developer reaches out, you know, I, I definitely will share with them what I've heard from the community, what the community has expressed that they want in that particular area. And if it's something that I know the community doesn't want, I make sure to let people know up front so that I'm not wasting their time or the community's time. So I just wanted to make sure for the purpose of my constituents that are on this call, you know, I don't want them to walk away wondering where I stand um, if if that proposal was to come forth uh, with industrial. So thank you for clarifying again tomorrow uh, going before planning is only to subdivide it. If they meet legally, if they're able to, to meet the, um, the mandates, then it is able to be subdivided. But if there's anyone on the call who wants to give any opinion or thought 
on it. Um, if you would like to just send me an email at this point, we're uh, about almost 30 minutes over. So if you do uh, have an opinion on it, if you you know are supportive or in opposition, again, that's not going to change planning's decision because um, if that meet criteria, it happens. Um, but if you still want to submit an opinion, we want to make sure that um, they've heard the voice of our community. So if you would like to email me, please do. Um, I would assume everyone on here has my contact information um, or else you wouldn't have known how to join this call. So you probably have my email address, but it's delicia.porterfield at nashville.gov. That's D-E-L-I-S-H-I-A dot porterfield, P-O-R-T-E-R-F-I-E-L-D at nashville.gov. Uh, you also, uh, my Facebook page, if you guys are not following, please make sure to follow. It's Delicia 4 d 29 So it's D-E-L-I-S-H-I-A, the number four, the letter D, and then the number's 29. And if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, please make sure to do that. Um, you can either send me an email to sign up for the newsletter or there is a sign up link for my Facebook page. So um, again, thank you guys so much. I wanna give a special, special thank you to Matthew Wilkinson, and Roseanne Hayes uh, Shacklett. Thank you guys so much for being on the call. They're from our council office and thank you for uh, staying um, with us and allowing us to go over. I didn't anticipate it going over uh, 30 additional minutes, but we just had so much information to cover. And uh, Mr. Honeysucker, uh, again, for Metro Water and Public Works, thank you for being here. Um, thank you to our sergeants, uh, uh, Fernandez, White, and McDougal. Thank you guys so much for being uh, on the call and thank you to all of our constituents for being on the call. I hope I did not miss anyone um, that, that was on here. Oh, and uh, thank you so much, um, our traffic calming. Uh, Mr. Haggerty, thank you so much for, for being on as well. Uh, guys, thank you again. Uh, if you need me, send me an email. Thank you and uh, have a, a good night. Be safe. Make sure to continue to wear your mask and wash your hands and socially distance. So thank you guys. Have a good evening. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, guys. Uh, this concludes the meeting.